Howdy folks, thanks for checking in to Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology.com. I am Mr. Ulrich in this little video notecast thingy. We're going to be looking at binomial nomenclature. Of course, what do I do with any word that we first come upon in class? I take it apart. The by, of course, means to. Nomi it deals with names. Uh, nomen is just another form of name. And Kleitcher, we'll say, works for system and has to do with clan. Uh, so binomial nomenclature literally means a two-named naming system. In uh, Linnaean classification, which is what universally is used, uh, the two names that go into the two named naming system are the genus and species. In the case of good old humans, our scientific name is Homo sapiens. Uh, that's our genus and species. Now there can be more than one species within a singular genus. And in the case of Homo sapiens, there were, there aren't any more, but there were, uh, there were uh, common enough, there were enough characteristics in common between Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, and Homo habilis that we all uh, kind of were grouped together in one genus. Um, not too long ago, some fossils were found in the Neander Valley uh, in Germany of uh, some modern-ish looking uh, humans close enough to modern humans that uh, they're considered modern humans, homo sapiens, uh, but there were some distinct characteristics in their skulls and stuff like that that uh, warranted putting them in a separate group. The jury is still kind of out on whether uh, there was interbreeding, though it seems that that's probably possible. Well, if we're going to discuss species and subspecies, we should probably know what it means to be a species. Uh, this is a somewhat elusive definition. Nothing is uh, is perfect, I guess, when it comes to definitions. Uh, but this guy, John Ray, wanted to make a list of all of the plants in Great Britain. Then he would go from town to town and take samples and ask people and take his notes and see what kind of plants people had in different areas of Great Britain. And what he noticed was that... Uh, sometimes he would have the same name for different plants and sometimes uh, different names for the same plant or maybe two plants were awfully close but maybe what what really was the dividing line between one type of organism and one type of another organism so he is credited with coming up with this definition here, which is a working definition, red box, so this is an important information. Uh, the definition of species that we use now is that organisms can naturally interbreed to produce reproductive viable offspring, which just means that they can sustain a population, that their offspring can interbreed and make babies. So you have to be able to make babies, I can make babies, I can make babies. So here's the question. This is a donkey. Would we consider it a species? No, we wouldn't. The important thing is why we wouldn't consider it a species. Um, well, if you take a boy and a girl donkey and you turn, give them some candlelight and turn the lights down low and play them some groovy music, it doesn't matter. They're not going to ever make any more little mules. The way you get mules is by crossing um, donkeys and uh, horses. So when we write their scientific name, they don't get their own species. Uh, the horse is Echus cabalis, and the donkey is Echus sinus. So we write it down, Echus cabalis sinus. You'll see this um, type of writing in a lot of seed catalogs, because quite a few plants are crossbred. If you are the first person to describe an organism as being an individual species, maybe you found it actually the first person to find that organism, or it was an organism that used to be thought of as being part of another species. Whatever, you get to name it. You can name it anything you want. You can name it after your mom, which has been done. You can name it after yourself, which well, gets done a lot. You can name it after your favorite rock and roll guitarist, which has been done. Doesn't really matter. Just have to follow some rules. Uh, first off, they're all Latinized. Whether the root is in another language or not, um, you will notice that they all end in U.S., E.S., I.S., uh, stuff like that. This is a kind of a pet peeve of mine. Uh, whenever you write these down, please make sure that you underline them. Uh, if you are typing, you can certainly italicize. 
Um, but you, of course, can't. You can't write in italics. Uh, the genus is always capitalized. Uh, the species is lowercase. Of course, if you're starting off a sentence with species, I believe it is okay to uh, capitalize it. But other than that, it's always going to be uh, lowercase. Uh, most importantly, um, when when they do get named, most of the time they're going to be reflecting things like, uh, like I said, who described the species the first time. Uh, that's when you name it after yourself or your mother or something like that. Uh, or where the species was first described, as in a Neanderthal ensis. Anytime you see that ensis, it means coming from. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, oftentimes they'll describe the habitat or the uh, part of the world where they come from, uh, whether geographical, like Japonica, which means from Japan, or uh, Maritimus, uh, which deals with uh, the ocean. Most often what we're dealing with is uh, in names are uh, physical characteristics and behavior, Latin and Greek forms that uh, describe the physical characteristics and behavior that an organism might have. Uh, here's a classic example. We've got Haliatus leucocephalus, and if you know a little bit of the Latin, um, well, halite is what you spread on your driveway when there's a little bit, a uh, little bit of slippy out there. And uh, uh, Haliatus refers to a fisherman, uh, like in the ocean. Luco, of course, is white, and cephal refers to head. So, who is the fisherman with the prominent white head? That is the bald eagle. Well, that's certainly enough for this time around. Thanks for checking in. Again, I am Mr. Ulrich, and if you have any questions or concerns or comments or anything like that, you can certainly send them off to my email there. Uh, if you didn't get to this video by going to Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology .com, make sure you slide by there to uh, check out the labs and the study guides and the accompanying notes sheets sometimes that go with these uh, video notes casts. So if you have any feedback, please drop me a line. Love to hear from you. See you in class.